Manamekalai, the rich daughter of Sambuvarayar, was a happy girl, her father and mother, Tamayan Kanamaran, raised her with love and support from childhood. She was a tyrannical queen in Sambuvarayar's palace. Law was proceeding inside the house she had built. Until some time ago, Mani Megala's life was spent in games, dances, and frolics. Forty-five months ago, her life had its first setback. The family elders started insisting that she should do something against her will. It seemed that no matter how many hours Manamegala preached the lesson that obstinacy does not help, it would not help. For two or three years, every time Kanamaran returned home from the battlefields, he would tell her about his friend Valaveria. He is famous for his heroic prowess and wisdom. He will be admired as Cupid in beauty, Arcuna in valor and Lord Krishna in wisdom. He said, he is the right husband for you. The one who can keep you under control by subduing evil. Manamegali would like to hear all this often. At the same time she will fall burning on Kanamaran openly, she will fight with him. She said, are you just saying that? One day I will pick him up and read. I will see his skill. So be it, so be it. That's what Kanamaran would say. Manamegala also saw Valavere and Vandiyadeva with her imagination, used to talk with him in the mental world, laughed and played, fought and reconciled, and spent time in daydreaming. To her intimate friends, she sometimes enjoyed talking about her friend, the Vanara warrior. Four months before such pleasant daydreams, an unexpected disturbance occurred. Kanamaran started speaking in a different tone. Forget that orphan boy with no home, no title, no status. He said. He wished to install her on the Tanjavur throne. Then one day, he made it clear. He also said that he was going to marry Madhurinthagan, who was already married to the daughter of Chinnapalyavatarayar. Madhurinthagan said that he was going to be the next emperor. He said that if she marries Madhurinthagan, Manamegalai will become the empress of the three worlds, and the child born in her womb will probably rule the empire. Her parents also agreed to all this. But Manamegala did not like this talk at all, her mind was occupied with hearing about Vandiyathevan. Not only that, she knew that Madhurandhagan was not brave, that he was ignorant of the battlefield, and that till yesterday he was saying that he was going to become a preacher by anointing himself with Vibhuti and wearing Rudraksha. He already had a marriage. Tanjavur Palace ladies are very proud. People who think that they know civilization and ignore other villagers. Manamegali was very irritated by all this. Even if she gets the throne of Tanjavur or the throne of Devendran in Devaloka, she insists that she cannot marry Madhurantha. Then her resolve was strengthened when another piece of news came to light. It is said that when Pariya Palyavatare had come to Kadampur, Ila Irani Nandini had also come with him. But she did not come inside that temple. No see Kadampur Palace ladies. This was surprising at first. The courtiers talked about it with mockery and blasphemy. Then little by little the truth came out. Manamekali's disgust increased when she came to know that Ila Irani did not come to Mudubalak and Madhurandhagan did. Such he. I'm going to marry him who comes dressed as a woman in a fog with such fear? Not even a day. Manamekali confirmed that. Madhurandha had come to the palace at Mudubalak and at the same time Vandiyatheva, the ally of Gandhamaran, had also arrived. He came to that place and stayed for a while. Out of nowhere, an immeasurable melody came and caught hold of the hourglass. She stood behind the other girls. Vandiyathevan could not be seen face to face, face to face. Yet his weedy, smiling face, half seen behind the others, stuck in her heart. His voice and some of the words he spoke were etched in her memory. So once again Tomayan started an endless debate with Kanamaran. She said that even if the three-eyed Lord Shiva came and told her, she would not be able to marry Madhurinthagan even for a single leg. Even though she had only seen Vandiyadeva for a short time, she also intimated that she had lost her intimacy with him. This made Kanamaran extremely angry. At first it was a good word but it didn't work. Then, 
Van Die the Van is not my friend, he is my arch enemy. He is the one who stabbed me in the back, if you marry him, I will kill you and him. He said. He showed the stab wound on his back. He also said that Pavuver had survived due to Ile Arani's compassionate treatment. If you have so much faith in me, forget Van Die the Van. Manamegali's mind actually changed after hearing this. She was very fond of Kanamaran. It is impossible for him to marry the enemy who tried to kill him. So she tried to forget Van Die the Van. Yet it was no end in sight, and often, at unexpected times, his smiling face came before her mind's eye. It came in daydreams, it came in dreams at night. Because of this, for a few months, Manamegali had lost her natural joy. Sadness and exhaustion overwhelmed her. The elders thought that the reason for this was that the marriage season had arrived. All her friends tease her about it. Her friends tried to cheer her up with fun games but to no avail. Again, for the past few days, Manamegala had started to get a little excited. There was some excitement when she learned that her parents and Tomai and Kandamaran had abandoned the idea of marrying her off to Madhurinthagan. She overheard them gossiping about giving Manamekali to Adithakari Kalar, the eldest son of the emperor and the crown prince. There is no one, male or female, in Tamil Nadu who is not aware of Adithakari Kalar's heroic and heroic deeds. They also knew that he was refusing to smell for some reason. Isn't it an unimaginable privilege to marry such a person? How many royal women are doing penance to get that fruit all over this vast Indian continent? Manamegali got excited thinking about all this. The news that Aditha Kari Kalar from Kanchi and Paria Palyavetare from Tanjavur were to be guests at the Kadampur mansion gave her the old kind of excitement again. This time Palyavetare R is bringing his Isla Iirani too. Nandini Devi saved her life. Manamegali had heard a lot about her beauty, character, and intelligence from Kanamaran. Kanamaran had also said that the reason behind this new marriage talk was the Isla Iirani of Pavuvur. He had also told Manamegala to stand in front of her when she was in the Kadampur palace to treat her properly. Manamegali's heart had also matured accordingly. So for a week, Manamegali was engrossed in the same excitement and busy running around the palace overseeing the facilities for the guests. She focused on providing all the facilities in the palace area which was mainly reserved for the Isla Iirani of Pavur. Didn't Tomayan say otherwise? So she roasted the palace staff. She also tortured her friends. In the room where the Queen of Pavur was going to stay, she insisted on moving each item thirty times and placing it in a different place. She often visited the rooms where Prince Aditha Kari Kalar stayed with his friends. Someone named Parthipendra is going to come with him. What is he like or what? Who saw how they would change in this era? Vandiyadeva, who was his friend, belonged to Aditha Kari Kalar's family. If only he hadn't turned into such a traitor, wouldn't he join now? Yes. No matter how much Manamegali was busy with other exciting things, he could never forget that traitor. They said that the Queen of Pavur would probably come that night. So at last Manamegali was supervising the decoration of Nandini's room. Then she came in front of the looking glass fixed on the side of the wall for the Queen of Palyavur. She saw her face in it. She looked calmly for a while. She decided to herself and was satisfied that her face was no less beautiful. When I was about to leave the mirror, I saw another face in it. It came very close to his face and came to the point where his cheek was touching. It was the face of a warrior of the monkey clan who had been troubling her in her dreams. Unbeknownst to her, her mouth puckered up and she said, Goo! It screamed. The next moment only her face was visible in the mirror and another face disappeared.